Hello and welcome back to Alex Go Sailing. Uh, this episode, I'm gonna get started on the new boat. Right, the first job on the list is the centerboard or the lack of part of it or most of it rather um, but anyway underneath here right in the middle on the bunk of the trailer it's probably easier to access it from the front but there's a center board or part of a center board and now we've got to remove that and you've got to do that from the inside because there's a bunch of uh, pulley systems attached and some other things like that and we need to undo pop some pins out and it should just drop out um, but the main problem is the trailer because I think the first axle is pretty much where it sits and I've, the boat's just far enough on the trailer that I might be able to squeeze it out in front of the first bit of bar that goes across. Right, we're just inside the boat now and uh, as you can see, this is the handle that controls the centerboard and I've already kind of popped off this plate when I got the boat just to check it out and you can see you know, I have to undo this top plate and in there there's like a little drum there's some ropes wrapped around it and this basically turns that which then pivots the uh, centre board down but you'll, you'll see it when I get it out anyway we're going to take this off, we're going to somehow undo this there's a nice video online which I found which is going to help me, it basically shows the whole process um, there's a couple of pins in the drum so you've got to take this off pop some pins out, this allows you to slide this shaft out then once that shaft's out there's a couple screws that hold these two like plasticky plates on each side you can see this profile is and the center board is probably just a little bit low down to the bottom of the hole and if you can see how deep it is here i'm probably gonna have to dig that hole gonna get these off and uh see how we get on is glooped on there did the job though especially when you use that much of it now inside of there you can actually see the drums which drum doesn't actually look too bad here that white plate you can see where the seam joins in so that's the same on this side where it's got a plate on each side and then the board would be under that but you can see this drum i think that might be one of the pins or something but there's pins in there you can rotate it around just try and find the pins but you see the mechanism just rotate round oh there's a cross head in there i just spotted right just gonna go underneath now it's quite nice that you can go between the two holes when it's folded up still gonna watch your head out for this thing done my back on that a few times coming out going in is not so bad and then you've got all these little ones so underneath here you can see the box the very end of it down there and uh, here is the bloke of broken ply. You can see those two profiles of probably like HDB plastic or something, something along those lines that slide up. But yeah, very broken centerboard. So I'm just deciding which way around to drop it out, whether it in its down configuration will get past this bar here. So we've got a screwdriver in there and uh, give it a Bit of a tap, kind of see it. I think that's through now. Yeah, I think that one's through. If we pop the other one, we should be able to rotate. Now, on the video, they said when you pop the pin out, it kind of rests on the top of the center board. So, eek, eek. Says that. Let's try and rotate it to get it out, like so. You can see how it's sticking out now. So, I get my mole grips and just give that a pinch. These are wound all the way out, so wind it in. Probably about there, maybe. These aren't the best mole grips I've ever had, but well, there we go. Right, don't lose the pin. Put you there.
Oh, there we go. Alright, there's that pin. Now, this shaft will pull out, but what I want to try and do is get it. Let's see, it's not going to want to now. I want to get it back. Back so that it rotates all the way down before I pull this pin out. So, what I'm going to have to go is to go down there underneath the boat and manually pull it. Right now, the problem people have with these boats is these, uh, well, obviously, where the, well, this isn't doing much of a good job. But basically, where this shaft goes through, it tends to leak, uh, especially around here. But it leaks. Um, so, what people do is they drill holes at the top and a couple at the bottom to pull the uh, this bit of plastic really nice up and tight against it. But before they do that, they inject like a sealant, and then until it squeezes out around every every hole and orifice, then they put the screws in, tighten it right up, and then that prevents this area from leaking because it's kind of sealed of 360. So you can't you won't get a leak where the shaft goes. So what I'll do now is undo these few screws, and then untake out the shaft. Hopefully the sealant holds it up a bit, and then all it should be is just give it a good shove, and it'll drop out the bottom. shaft is probably holding up the entire of the uh, centerboard so when this comes out it's gonna go whoop, you hear the thud ready not quite so that's that's stuck in there so the sealant has actually stuck it um, the shaft I mean it's not bad shape really like just a brown tinge to it, nothing too crazy, so minimal rust. I think most of that's from like the threads here, so this is like the locking nut. So we'll give it a right clean up, it's probably good at stainless steel, so. Oh, I should really take this table off beforehand. Oh, here we go. I'm just prying. I don't know if you can see this, I'm just prying this top piece here. That's just where it's stuck. So I'll just see that it's sliding down now. So you've got a bit of separation there. So it's got a bit of a resistance. Oh, there we go. If I can push it by hand now. So what I might do is leave that there, go down, dig my hole, and uh, see if we can get this out. Get underneath the boat and we should see something sticking out underneath here. Yes, we have something sticking out. Is it kind of rubbing up on this? Uh, it's kind of got. Oh, it came out then. So, I need to push that back up and try and get that in pointed. So, see if I can do this. It's... Oh, that is so close from coming out. I'm only going to have to dig a little bit of a trench. You can see it's almost all the way out. Right, it's just started to rain. Luckily I've got the job underneath the boat, so I'm going to start digging. I'm going to try and save some of the grass.
right, I've just dropped this down now. You can see that drum mechanism. I've pivoted this down. So what I'm doing now is it, this bunk over here can actually slide off on that end. So I'll undo that and uh, see if I can lean it over that way and then pull it out. If not, I'll get a jack on the other side of the trailer just to lift the boat up and angle it a bit. So we'll give that a go. So I don't have to deeper, dig a deeper trench because we've got a lot of dirt out here at the minute. Right, it's the next day, and as you can see, we've got the centerboard here, what's left of it. You can see where it's broken off. You can see we've got a little bit of the profile there. So that's nice, we've got this, this back end. So that can be remade quite nicely. Looks like it's literally just wood that's been painted. No fiberglass at all. Literally just wood. Um, there's like little cutouts there. Um, so you can put these bolts in. I think making a new one would be relatively easy um, But there's a guy down in Emsworth that I'm gonna get to rebuild this because it's part of the price of the boat And to be honest, I've got enough work to do on this boat and I'd rather get this made properly Nicely because it's got to fit in that box and fit the boat nicely and I want it to be uh, nice and proper so it's going to save me some time and allow me to get the boat perfected ready for the season because I haven't got much time really. It's now almost November, so yeah, not long. I'll be able to reuse these uh, these plates, but literally nothing holds them on, just a pin. And the other important thing is this drum. Um, it's a continuous rope that wraps around and then there's like a little screw, a little grub screw there which like pinches the rope as it passes through and loops back around so uh, we're just gonna I'll probably replace this rope and get get a fresh one in now apart from that I filled in the hole there so that's nice I've got one of the um, mast raising poles those scaffold ones away because it's bent I'm gonna try and get it unbent and it also needs like a little clever thing to, to go onto that little chain plate there Right, so it's about time to get the centerboard back in Mingale. And you can see I've coated it up with some, uh, well, some anti-foul. Um, I've given it a few layers of epoxy underneath that, so she's nice and good. I've had to reprofile it a bit, so it's a bit more wing-like. Um, hopefully it does a good job, but it's very solid and hopefully rot resistant. So to get it in, I've got the original pieces, the original pin, um, this is the shaft that goes through on the inside and that goes through the drum. All right, Daniel's got the center board up. I've put it together. We've got the pin in here for this pivot and then that will literally do that. Oh, not, not to there. And then back down again. This will spin this piece, but there's no pins in there. So you can see where this hole is here and the other hole in there. We've got to insert it so that these two holes are at the top here for the access hole in the boat. Now, on the trailer, I removed a wheel. Well, Daniel removed a wheel, and a wheel on the other side, and then I unbolted the axle, or the first axle, and dropped it. So then having this axle out of the way should allow us to have enough room to slide it in and across, because um, it needs to be in the closed position or the up position to actually go in to the boat. Right, problem, it doesn't fit. 
the uh, thickness is a bit too much it's close but it's a bit too much because it's a bit tight going up and then that back end doesn't want to it won't want to pivot out so we've got to lose a bit of length or at least on the top corner so i'm going to double check the measurements to what i have or what it's meant to be and see if i can make it fit so it's a bit of shame we painted it all and all that but it looks like i'm gonna have to get the belt sander out and attack it again and then put it back in shouldn't be a long process should be pretty quick but now we've got to get it out and then put it back in so that's a pain right back underneath mingle and we have the final revision of the centerboard and my brother posing and what we've done is we had to take a bit of thickness off this end and we've added a radius to that end um, when it swings down and this should hopefully slide in and we'll be able to finally fit it with all the bits and bobs so let's get cracking The board is slid in. I've wound this little drum here, and um, there's holes in the top of it that line up, so it has to be maybe a couple of inches of that end swung out, and then that should line up up top. Um, so, fingers crossed that happens. I'll put a fresh line on it as well, and so hopefully that works. We've got the pin and the boards that go in, so don't lose that. I'm gonna just pop those in and slide it up, and then I'll have to we'll do a little quick test fit, make sure it goes in and then uh, I'll get the ceiling out and seal it. Right, got the uh, centre board dropped back down. You can see where I've got a seal on this side. That's actually capped off with fiberglass in that little hole. This hole is the one that leads out to where the handle goes through. Uh, you can see where we've got to put some silicon on. And the, the aim of the six holes here is to squirt sealant in through those. And create a seal and then you put little screws in those and it, it pulls it tight to this edge to try and make sure water doesn't come out of here um but apart from that pretty good we will see where that drum is it has to be in the middle so we have to rotate the uh center board a bit further down but apart from that she fits so that's pretty good and uh it's going well so far for our net last attempt hopefully final attempt so i'm just going to whack some of this uh set like a flex on it and uh, fingers crossed globbed on heaps of sealant um so we're just gonna push it up now and fingers crossed it will go into place i need to go get the pin though so i can't forget the pin i'm ready to go up when you are can we just go up now yeah stop going up just make sure you pin Got another couple centimetres. How's that? We got one more centimetre. Half a centimetre. Yeah, that's in. Do you want to drop the back end a bit? Look at that, we've got a bit of squeeze out. Very nice, nice to see. I've got the pin in here. Um, I might add a bit of sealant in when it gets up to the plate. Uh, I might want to thread this back a touch. Um, also, these holes here are tapered a bit, actually. Right, you can see, pin in, and then there's the drum. We just need to move that drum a little further around. Then we'll have to try and pull it up a bit and to try and get the pin in and that's going to be the hardest part of this operation i think um trying to pull that because you haven't really got a very big hole to put it through so i'm going to use this little uh, claw device to grab onto that rope and try and spin it a bit
Bingo! Do you see that? That was in. Easier than I thought it'd be. So now, hopefully, see there, I've got a hole. So there's a pin's gonna go in there. And then there, I've got another hole. Right, so we've got pin located in the hole. This rotated round correctly, you can see we've got a bit of squeeze out there, which is nice. So I'm just gonna whack that pin in a bit, then whack the other pin in, and then I will start cramming the thing for the sealant, whack the top cap back on, and give it a test, because no good if it doesn't work. Oh, that's home. And this lock nut should like lock up to it, but that's good. I just want to see if I can see the pins on the other side, because that'd be really handy to see if they're sticking through or not. Hard to say, I can't remember how much I turned it around. Oh. Well, the pins are still in there. All right, the pins are solidly home. I checked the other end of them, look good. Uh, it's a little loose, but we can always tighten it from the bottom side, which is fine. Um, but we can see how much it stretches and we can always adjust it later on. Um, but for now, I'm going to start wedging some of the sealant in through those six holes. and this, Hopefully, it will squeeze out the middle there as well, and then I can tighten this nut down. This nut itself is actually meant to like lock it in place. And there's like another fitting that goes on here to turn it. Um, so it's not like hypercritical, but the main thing is getting a seal all the way around that hole just to make sure you don't get any water coming in through there um, because that would not be very good. I'm just going to get the tube of sealant and start off with this hole. Just squeeze. All right, all squeezed in now. Just going to get, I think these are the right screws. I think. Because if they're too long, they'll actually interfere with the uh, with the spinny wheel thing. But if we have six of this same type, they should be the right ones. Well, there's five. And there's a sixth one. So, I'll screw these in. Now, with all that buttoned up, I will have to wait until I can get down to the water to test it out properly, but it does seem to be working just fine. This should allow me to point higher than 40 degrees too, which is much needed. Now, you would have noticed that I've been doing these episodes based on projects and on the timeline, so hopefully you can follow along. I have some big projects coming up in the next episodes, so you have those to look forward to. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.